the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is God's word and its offensive posture. The belt of truth is the comprehensive, objective reality of truth from all sources, centered in the revelation of God, his word. The belt of truth is centered in the word, primarily in its inward orientation to your soul and what you might call its preserving, protecting, defensive posture. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God in its primarily offensive, thrusting posture intended to penetrate the enemy's purposes. We wield this sword to penetrate the culture. The sword is the typical instrument of the military culture. It is the offensive instrument of war, the principal means of dealing the telling blow to the enemy. The Roman soldier sword or Macharia, was anywhere from 6 to 18 inches long. It was primarily a thrusting weapon used in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was the warrior's primary weapon, and he was thoroughly familiar with it. The soldier and his weapon were so close that the weapon was like a member of the soldier's family. I suppose you might compare it to the finely balanced pistol of the noble lawman of the Old West. How many great westerns have have we seen in which the old warrior, having retired from the active battlefield, is now faced with a crisis of major proportions. He walks quietly to the back of the room, where he sits, sits an old trunk, where there sits an old trunk. Carefully, he removes a bundle wrapped in soft cloth. It contains his trusty sidearm and leather holster. He turns the gun over in his hand, strokes it with his finger, hefts it in the palm of his hand, then, with the dexterity beguiling his age, he spins the gun around his finger and slips it back into his holster. Then he straps it onto his waist and heads out to do the right thing. When I think of that scene in terms of spiritual warfare, I think of my own father. I remember very well the day when I was just a youngster that Dad was able to purchase his first Thompson Chain reference Bible. It was, of course, in the old King James Version. It was a thick and heavy enough to use as a doorstop in any mountain lodge. I remember thinking he needed a wheelbarrow just to carry it around. Over the years, that old Bible has become the most obvious symbol of my father's life. He never leaves home without it. He carries it faithfully to our elders' meetings. A strange sense of serenity falls over me when I watch him pick it up, open it, thumb through a couple of pages, and drop his finger on a well-worn spot. If you, were, if you were able to pick up that old Bible yourself, you would find that it was well used, underlined, thumbed, and starred, and you would find in the margins, top, bottom, and sides, in the precious handwriting of a, of a man I deeply love, those personal little notes that offer spiritual insight and uplift. The book has become a truly awesome weapon in Dad's hands. Not bad for an old coal miner turned city fireman, wouldn't you say? Dad and I frequently have to chuckle because so many people who come to our church and see Dad in his Bible just assume he's a retired pastor. Nope, just a Christian infantryman with a well-worn sword that, uh, that balances beautifully in his aged hand. When was the last time you picked up your sword, soldier? Why don't you go get it right now? Put this book down. Go find your favorite old Bible and hold it for a while. Thumb through its pages. Let its wisdom remind you of all the things that are right, right about life under the king's enlistment. The sword of the spirit is powerful, culture-penetrating weapon. It is your primary offensive weapon. Get to know it. Become intimately familiar with it. Feel it. Feel its balance. Feel its edge. Eat with it. Sleep with it. Walk with it. Live with it. Know it. Love it. And use it. Or make no difference on the battlefield.